Let's go. Okay, got it. Hi, guys. Welcome to Alive, my search for the best ways to live. I'm your host. My name is Jiga Jr. And our guest today is uh, uh, Commissioner of the Cebu uh, Ports Authority. He's also the youngest cabinet member of the Arroyo administration years ago. Sub-cabinet, not cabinet. Sub-cabinet. Sub-cabinet <laughs> member of the Arroyo administration a few years ago during the GMA administration. Mike Lopez Acevedo. Hi, Mike. Hi, Jigs. Uh, it's great to see you again. <laughs> yeah, I know. Last time we saw each other, we were face to face in a, in a little studio yeah, for a podcast. Uh, yeah, now we're here uh, all through Zoom, uh, the new normal, right? Well, <laughs> we all have to move forward. So <laughs> nice view you got there, by the way. Thanks, thanks. You know, you're, you, I've I've always noticed about you, Mike. You're so opinionated about a lot of things, especially all things uh, uh, political. You know, and the people listen to you, right? And I'm curious how you feel about the current crop of, of presidential so we have, uh, who are applying for the job. Mike, I'm, 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 I've always wanted to ask you, where do you get your political insights, and how did you uh, uh, get to where you are? The, you know, the youngest uh, member of the uh, sub cabinet of the Arroyo administration, commissioner of the Cebu Ports Authority, and, and, and I think in a way you're also a thought leader of, of sorts. How did that happen? Uh, okay, which which do I answer first? Uh, you can answer all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Um, I I guess you know uh, the the aphorism "fortune favors the bold" uh, that applies to me as well. I'd like to think I'm not an idiot. Um, <laughs> at least I have <laughs> half a brain, uh, and it it's helped get me to where I am. Okay. Uh, it, it's, it's God's, it's uh, just sheer determination. And I guess in my family, um, I have all these political connections, like relations. But what's good about it is it's always like several degrees removed. Okay. You know, it's, it's never in my immediate family. And I like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm so happy that none of my parents or my siblings are in politics. Uh, but then I have all these relatives who are in positions of authority, national, different sides. Sometimes it creates complications for me because who do I support? Uh, the other one might get offended. But I'd like to think that uh, in a way, um, I'm able to leverage this uh, uh, to, to pursue certain ambitions. I will admit that. Um, so you think, okay, it's about privilege. And that's a very big deal for the wokes now. Oh, you're so privileged. But it doesn't, you know, it's not everyone who's born with certain connections are able to use it, right? Mm-hmm. So there's element of strategy there. Uh, it's not careless. It's not thoughtless. It's, it's all um, well thought out. And, and just because I'm related with someone doesn't mean I agree with them all the time. Mm-hmm. And, and that's also a pitfall of being me. Um, we can be very close, friends or relatives, but if uh, there's something that, uh, like a non-negotiable, uh, then we will fight. And I think I have parted ways with a lot of powerful people who happen to be very good friends of mine because of uh, things that are I consider to be non-negotiable. So um, I guess when I choose a leader or I, cho- I choose a, a candidate, uh, there are biases, of course, that come into play, but it's never just the only consideration for me. Um, I have to take everything into account, cross-reference bias uh, vis-a-vis uh, the candidate himself or herself, vis-a-vis their performance, vis-a-vis the issues of the day. And there's a chance that I might not even choose them. And you said, you mentioned um, um, your, uh, your core beliefs. You said uh, there are certain things that are non-negotiable. Uh, maybe you can mention a few of your non-negotiables. What what are they exactly? What do you mean by non-negotiables? Well, health health is a non-negotiable for me. Mm-hmm. Science is a non-negotiable for me. Okay. Um, because that's a fact. Those are okay. facts. Uh, the only thing that disputes that can overrule science is better science. And, yeah, exactly. And, um, because it's beyond opinion. See, yeah. we, can, we, we can have all these opinions and agree to disagree on our opinions, but when it comes mm-hmm. down to 
what's tested, what's what's uh, proven by by science, or overruled by by the, the same science or a different kind of science. Uh, that that goes over and above our opinion and over above our our supposed biases. So science, health, and of course lives, lives uh, of people. That those are non-negotiables for me. You know, um, when I was younger, like a lot younger. When I entered the Arroyo administration, I was, I think, 20, 21. I mean, 21, I guess. I was fresh out of, of uh, university. I was, like, burning with idealism. Like, too much. <laughs> too much idealism. Um, I have since learned to temper that idealism. Um, President Arroyo herself has been uh, very instructive. She's not the type to force her values and her way of doing things down your throat. She's not the type. She's. It's really. If you ask her, if you ask her suggestions, she's the type who will say, "Well, I'm not. I don't want to impose." She's just like that. But one time, when I was visiting her in veterans, when she was on, uh, when she was in hospital detention, um, it was like a Tuesdays with Mori event for me. And then she tells me, "Mike, you know, you're very idealistic, which is great. Keep your idealism, preserve it, but be careful not to demand." that same idealism from everyone else. Because then you'd be self-righteous. Like who's to say that you're the final and most competent arbiter of right and wrong? And then when you do that, you'll be fighting with people, pointing fingers there, feeling that you're holier than thou, that you do things better than everyone else. And you'd be busy pointing fingers. And if you're given a golden opportunity, let's say to lead, and in her case, she said, I became president. You'd be wasting so much time fighting with so many people and you'd be a voice in the wilderness. And leadership is not about being right all the time. Leadership is about getting things done mm-hmm. and uh, you know, uh, moving toward a, a goal. So she said it would have been a wasted life, a wasted opportunity if you, if you find yourself to be old and gray and look back at the things that you could have done but you failed to do with the positions or the responsibilities given you because you were so busy being right. So I said, you know what? Makes a lot of sense. So I said, okay, I'm going to temper my idealism and just demand it from myself. I mean, you know, do good in your own sphere of influence. Um, Maybe look the other way sometimes because you can't be fighting with everyone all the time. But then you said non-negotiables that even if this is the closest person to you, one of the closest people to you, if they do this, if they uh, violate that, that you'd be willing to part ways with them. So th- that time, I, uh, that was another chapter of life, uh, which probably marked my uh, entry into adulthood. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a more, prob- it was probably a more mature, hopefully more mature, more realistic perspective uh, toward life and toward leadership. You know, when you're ideal, Mike, uh, don't you uh, sort of claim that something is right? That's what being an ideal person is, right? And also, oh, sorry, claims, you were breaking. Sorry, um, I was I was saying that when you're ideal, uh, you you strongly believe and 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 claim that something you feel is right, right? Th- that's what that's being right. an idealist is. And you mentioned earlier about your uh, non-negotiable that science is not negotiable. Isn't aren't all claims uh, made on this earth? kind of a scientific uh, belief that this is the right thing to do. And since your, your scientific uh, uh, side of things is non-negotiable, isn't your idealism ought to be non-negotiable as well? Since it is a scientific claim that you're making that this is the right thing to do, granting that all claims that, made, that, are, that are made here uh, in this planet that involves physical things uh, is a scientific claim as well. What are your thoughts uh, on that? The scientific claim is not a scientific fact. Okay. You, you can proffer views, you can proffer hypotheses. Correct, correct, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, and you can assert them to a certain extent. Yeah. Uh-huh. But, you know, if they have a, if they impact people's lives, especially like now, a perfect example is the pandemic. Uh, there, are cert- there are certain things, certain decisions that no matter what your opinion is, it will really impact the lives of others, uh, adversely or or otherwise. So I don't think there's any. That's not that. I don't think that's up for debate. Mm-hmm. So correct. Yeah. 
Some of is like, okay, you do this, you know, I think in my view, uh, uh, this policy will benefit more, will benefit people more. Uh, then we can debate about that. Unless you have data that proves me wrong. Mm-hmm. But I guess um, well, idealism is quite subjective. Mm-hmm. It's not like science, which is supposedly very objective. Objective, unless the yeah. Science, yeah. yeah. Unless the science is... Uh, or clouded in uh, deceit. No? Mm-hmm. The, the processes were not followed. If the, the right scientific processes were not uh, achieved. Mm-hmm. You know, it, because it, science can be corrupted also. Absolutely, so, yeah. yeah. But, but when it comes to idealism, it's very subjective. And the, mm-hmm. the thing with that is my values or what I value as a person based on my upbringing, based on my education or my family background or my, even my religion, it's very different from, let's say, your set of values and ideas. And who's to say that my idealism, idealism should be imposed on you? And that's why you have all of this uh, walkery online where people just expect, okay, if you don't agree with me, um, you're wrong. You're, can- you're canceled. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's, it's too much. It's preposterous yeah. Yeah. that we would assume that we're better at something or more right or, or more... Uh, uh, bias or whatever it is that you want to, whatever the standard that's being uh, set. No, uh, I don't think that's right. But so, I guess it's good to temper idealism. A lot of people who have overbearing idealism, that's how fan- fanaticism starts. Or fundamentalism, of, right? Fundamentalism, fanaticism, ex- extremism. Mm-hmm. It starts, you know, the road to hell is paved, is paved with good intentions. And you look at the stories of all these extremists and fundamentalists who probably have committed mass murder, who mm-hmm. started wars, mm-hmm. uh, or have become terrorists. They started out to the best of intentions, imposing their views, their values, and what they believe is right. So I, I don't want to go down, down that path. <laughs> well, actually, uh, Mike, I, I, I did want to go that path because it's funny that you mentioned fundamentalism and, and extremism. Because I think uh, uh, one of the things that I, I I love reading about is 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 Sam Harris. Sam Harris, uh, his he grew prominence after nine one one when he wrote the book The End of Faith. And uh, one of his claims is that over certainty is the enemy. That if you're over certain about what you believe in, then it'll cause you to you know drive an airplane or fly an air, airplane into a building because you're over certain about things. And uh, and th- that is what his claim is that over certainty is the enemy. And to to, uh, to curtail that is to have conversations uh, like what we're having now. And also one of the things that uh, he mentioned in his book, uh, End of Faith, was the biases that we have. And we have certain biases that when we, when we choose, you know, uh, a religion, a, a political party, a, a, a presidential perhaps, like confirmation bias, Dunning-Kruger effect, and uh, the cognitive dissonance bias. So we have all of these biases uh, that we have to be aware of when choosing our leaders, especially now that the elections are coming up. Um, Mike, I know that uh, this is going to be a difficult for you since uh, you mentioned uh, in the beginning that you might have some biases and you got into yeah. a, a trouble earlier of the week uh, when you, you announced something on your Facebook page. But uh, I know, but, but still, I know that you're very brave and you're very courageous and you don't really care as much <laughs> as, as I think uh, most people do. So... Mike, can you give us uh, your perspective on the current crop of presidential, starting with Bongbong Marcos? How do you feel about Bongbong Marcos? I think he's number one now in the survey, right? Uh, okay. Full disclosure, we're related. Uh, I have a relationship with uh, Bongbong. In fact, the meeting uh, that I had just come from was with him. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, and his sister. And we're just brainstorming ideas. Um, so I have a, a bias for Bongbong because... Of course, I know a different side of him compared as opposed to what is being said, what, how he's being painted in the media. And I guess the bias there is, uh, okay, there's something about him that you, the rest of you don't know. Why should I, why should your opinion shaped by what's said in the media overrule what I know based on how I know him in person? So there's a bias there and I'm, I'm cognizant of that. But uh, well, he's a pretty decent guy. I love the fact that uh, he did wait, you know, in conversations with Sarah Duterte. He was very, very respectful of her. Basically, he ran, he's running because Sarah said, I'm not running, you run. 
but he was gentleman enough uh, to wait. You know, he's, he's, the, he's the son of Ferdinand and Imelda. You know, and there could have been some entitlement there that, hey, I'm good enough for the, for the presidency. Why should I wait for you? But he waited until a few days before filing uh, to decide, until deciding to run for president. And I think that's a very good quality. Um, well, you know, he's more senior. He uh, became governor and senator. Of, uh, and well, if you believe, if you believe that uh, the protest that he won the vice presidency, but of course, we know that we, we know how that uh, that uh, that whole episode ended. It, you know, so there's that. Um, I, I see sincerity and humility in him, uh, contrary to the public perception. But of course, there's the baggage. There's the baggage of uh, there are legacy issues, and that's something you can't just brush aside or sweep under the rug. And and he will face it. He will face it. He has no choice. I'm sure if he had an option, he'd just just uh, live in a different universe where those are not issues. But he will have to face those issues in due course. I mean, as as we're speaking right now, it's always in the newspapers. It's basically, the front runner. So. Every um, we can expect a lot of black propaganda, maybe true, maybe false. You have to sift through that. But people have to face all of those issues, whether real or imagined. You can't be Bombo Marcos and expect uh, a good or a more conducive environment for him to run for president. It will always be like this because of the because of how things were during the time of his father and, and, and all the issues that arose after that. So he will have to face that. And he's running for president. And I'm pretty sure he's thought about it, that it's part of the territory. Um, there's a part of me that would have preferred a completely fresh uh, crop of candidates. No more old surnames, Marcos, Aquino, blah, blah, blah. That would have been really ideal. But this is where we are, and uh, the events of the last year and in the last few years have led us to this point where someone like Bombo Marcos is still presidential timber, and uh, and a lot of people still like him, you know, and then they, they feel they, that he could do a good job as president. So how do you debate with that? We can only speculate and surmise and hope that, you know, we that we would have had a better or a different list of prospective candidates, but we're left with someone like him there. And then who's next? Uh, or do you have you a follow-up? Yeah, I have a follow-up. You, you mentioned uh, his political baggage, right? His, his, his past, his, his, his parents, his mom and his dad. And I, I think he's already faced that in the previous elections because he did run for vice president, right? Mm -hmm. So these storylines, these debate points, are, I've already been taken up and uh, we're going to have to rehash them over and over again. But I, you, I saw him recently uh, when he finally declared uh, to run for president and he, he does brush off all of these things. And he, he doesn't um, he doesn't really um, his, his best defense is, you know, you, you can't fault me for the sins of my father. Um, is, is that going to be uh, sort of his stance moving forward into 2022 that you, you can't fault me for all of the things that my father did? Is that oh, what it is? I, I can't really speak for him because um, I'm not helping him officially for the campaign. You know? We're just yeah. brainstorming ideas. But do you think that that's a good strategy? Is that him calling? Is that him calling you? <laughs> no, no, no. Personally, uh, <laughs> he says, "What are you saying there?" <laughs> uh, no, personally, uh, I guess I, if I were in shoes, I'd be more. I'd be more. I'd be more open to discussing the issue, mm -hmm. but that's, um, it, it, this is not my father we're talking about. Yeah. So, um, maybe for him, you know, people, the world has judged my dad. Don't force me to also, uh, not honor my father. The world and history have, have said enough about my dad. So maybe I'm just saying, maybe that's where he's coming from. He's the Ferdinand Jr. If uh, through all of this, just to win uh, more votes, he throws his dad under the bus, I don't think that's also nice. I mean, personally, I'm not the biggest fan of Ferdinand Marcos. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't live through that era, 
So I can't really speak with firsthand experience whether it was good or bad. I hear both sides. Um, and I have a personal relationship with his wife because she's a relative and she's very nice to me. So there's a bias there. But if you look at my Facebook, if I share stories of Imelda, for example, it would always be personal anecdotes. Very rarely would they be political. And I don't quite recall that I would come to the late uh, president's defense, like in a political sense. So maybe something that would be seen as Paul Marcos would be sharing some of his letters, uh, the letters from, Gabi, from, from the Eugenio Lopez or the letter from Boy Laurel, and it may be seen as Paul Marcos. But to be outright defending uh, that regime or how things were at the time, maybe in a subtle way, I'd say, you know, yeah, they had all the infrastructure. But I wouldn't be like the person to defend uh, that regime. So I, I think one time I even told Auntie, uh, Auntie Mel, uh, Mrs. Marcos, I told Mrs. Marcos uh, many years ago, probably more than a decade ago, said, Auntie, how could you stay in power for 21 years and say there's no element of greed there? You know, so I can see how my, my mouth gets me into trouble. Right? <laughs> Answer. So, and then and she looks at me, perhaps, you know, perhaps. But, you know, you're looking at it uh, from hindsight. And hindsight is 2020. Um, it was, you have to understand, it was a different world. It was a different time. It was more the rule rather than the exception. Perhaps if Ferdinand were president now, he'd stay for six years. The problems of that time, are the, you know, the problems of today are the different, different are very different from the problems of that time. It's a very good answer. Mm -hmm. um, if probably I was more antagonistic, if I were more, let's say, left-leaning or more yellow or pink now, maybe I would have pressed further. But just to show you that I'm not completely pro or not completely anti. So, so should so, he, uh, should Bong Bong apologize for all of the things that his uh, his parents stole from the coffers of the Philippine government? Should they apologize they, they, for, for, for Marshall? Or there are actual cases. And in fact, Imelda is, is convicted with the one case right now. And she's already returned. They've already returned millions of dollars worth of of cash and and jewelry as well, right? In the in in the United States, so um, there are actual uh, real legal uh, cases that are are in fact uh, Imelda is guilty of, right? And and martial law as well. It claimed a lot of lives and, and all that. I stuff. think as should, far as should Bong Bong ask for forgiveness of for those, or that's not his uh, to forgive because he didn't do that. Okay, to ask forgiveness. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, First of all, uh, I think uh, the cases, uh, I think there's only one case. Where she's yeah, exactly. Convicted. Yeah. There's the, one. The um, yeah. And it's graft. And, yeah. and I think she was convicted by a court that took, I think, like 30 years mm -hmm. or nearly 30 years to render judgment. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, this is the same division that, uh, court division that uh, basically exonerated a member of the Liberal Party uh, because the case had dragged on for a few years and they say justice delayed is justice denied. It's not fair to, to this other accused. Mm -hmm. But how is, it, how is it fair for Mrs. Marcos who has had to face this same case in that same division for, 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 a, for a far longer period of time? So there's, uh, there's also a, a, a justice issue there. But of course, I'm not going to defend her for everything else. She's faced, she's facing, she's faced She's won most of the cases that, I don't know, what, from what I know, it's like close to 900 or something cases. But uh, this is a woman who returned from, the, from exile, who didn't have to return from exile. She returned from exile to face all the accusations in court. And um, I think that uh, she's, what, 92 years old. Um, I think one of, the re one, of the, one of the reasons she's still alive is... Um, she wants to be able to face every case and maybe win uh, uh, every case. So I think uh, one side there, one one side uh, of the issue is that you know at least you have a woman in her age who's still facing all the charges uh, from the administration of her husband, and some of it is uh, well directed at her, um, but that's her. Uh, if Bong Bong should apologize for 
for, for example, issues that are still being heard in court or for abuses during martial law because there were abuses. As there are abuses in every other regime, except that that was martial law. Longer, longer also. it was a far longer... uh, 20 years, yeah. 20, 20, 20, 21 years. Yeah, yeah. So... um, should he or should he not apologize? <laughs> if, you were, if you were Bong Bong Marcos, how about that? Bong Bong, can, would you apologize issue, for all the crimes of your father? I can issue, for example, if I were him, okay, this okay. is just me. I can <laughs> issue an apology and maybe it will, even that won't be enough. Yeah. Right? I'll say something like, um, you know what? Uh, I recognize that there were abuses during that time. The military uh, uh, was on top of things. My father... Uh, declared martial law and lives, some lives were lost and, and very, it's very unfortunate, more than unfortunate uh, deplorable, but um, that, I mean it's so hard to be apologizing for something that you didn't really uh, commission you know? and then people say, oh he was old enough at the time so what is an apology that's enough? Because if I try to, you know, I recognize that it was not perfect and there were certain abuses and some people, naligsan, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so I apologize to those who have been uh, victims during my, of martial law, but I'm still here running for president. I mean, what's enough? What's an enough apology? So you're not going to apologize because it's, not, it's never going to be enough if you were Bong Bong Marcos. No, I mean, I guess I would recognize that it was, there were certain abuses that there were abuses during that regime, that there mm-hmm. were victims of uh, martial law, I would I would recognize that. I would acknowledge that and make sure that, you know, I would learn from the mistakes of my father. How about the graft charges? In fact, you do know that there were certain millions of jewelry that were returned a few years ago, decades ago, right? And certain money that was returned in, in, in the Swiss uh, accounts of the Marcoses, right? So there are actual money returned and jewelry returned and all of that stuff. Do you think he'll also ask forgiveness from that? Because uh, I think he's still benefiting from, from all that money, right? In, in, indirectly. I don't, th- uh, it's hard to say that he's benefiting because there's a worldwide freeze order. Okay. That's why when people say, oh, return it, return it. I don't think it's as simple as returning it. Okay. Returning whatever that is because there's a worldwide freeze order. It's not up to the Marcoses to just withdraw it and give it to the Philippines. Mm-hmm. It, it, it requires the Philippine government and um, other parties uh, other parties that are participants are participant to the worldwide peace order, so it's not as simple as that. Um, so he did. Uh, Bong Bong did actually uh, work extra hard in changing the narrative on social media, right? I can tell that for years now. Uh, you know, I see all his work. I don't know if it's it's actually him, if it's coming from his camp, but it looks like there is a deliberate. Uh, 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 sort of move to uh, uh, change the narrative of, of, of sorts, right? Or at least give people their version of the story, yeah? I guess he's entitled to give yeah, their exactly. version. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, mainstream media and our textbooks have already uh, said its piece. It's, it's very clear what, what, the, what, that, uh, what the truth is, no? So, of course, the mark is what you expect. What do you expect, James? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. they're gonna sh- they're gonna share their version of the truth. Yeah. So it's up to the people uh, in this free marketplace of ideas to to believe what they want to believe, what they feel is uh, you know uh, what what they feel is the truth, the actual truth. Okay. Uh, so you have all of these efforts from both sides, you know? because it's not fair. Also, because you have you see you see certain memes. That make fantastical claims, okay, of uh, Marcos, the Marcos years being this and that, okay. like fantastical, like glory days, and it's just absurd. Some people believe it, and that's funny and tragic okay. at the same time. But would you believe that some of this actually comes from their enemies, mm-hmm. just to just to muddle things up? Yeah, of course, like, yeah. Like, they're, they're, like there's this uh, meme that was sent to me by a, a friend from the U.S. Embassy. And, and, and there's this black kid who was poor and whatever. And, and then one day, Fernando Marcos bombs into him in the States and inspires him, uh, talks to him about, you know, whatever. And then he grows up to be Michael Jordan. 
<laughs> well, there's so much fakery in in on the internet yeah, as well, you know. I mean, and it's difficult to sift through all that. All I'm of not, that. you know what? To be fair with them, uh, from what I know, okay, I'm not officially part of of, of Bong Bong's camp or his campaign, um, but from what I've seen, I've never I've never seen any like troll farm or um, any operation that that puts it out there. Mm-hmm. But I see I see trolls. I really do see Bong Bong Marcos trolls. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have all of these weird assertions. Let's say there's this Taliano wealth. You know, I'm, I don't know if you've seen that on YouTube, that there's this Taliano guy uh, who supposedly owns the entire country and that Marcos was his lawyer, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> well, and, that is a rabbit hole that we don't want to go uh, to, uh, Mike. But uh, one last question before we go to the next candidate. Um, why do you think Bong Bong Marcos is so popular in spite and despite of all of those things that we talked about? Well, that's hard to say, but I think it's because, uh, uh, well, maybe there's nostalgia for the Marcos years. For those who didn't encounter abuse at the time, I think they thought it was a good time, right? Um, maybe there's a, maybe there's a, also a distrust toward those, I mean, the regimes that follow. And they're more recent, no? Um, and they were also very self-righteous. You know, they would pontificate and speak from their, like, you know, speak with superiority from their high horse. And, and I think that really is disgusting to a lot of Filipinos. And so maybe it's a, more than actual support. I think it's a, a protest somehow, like a, a counterculture kind of thing, maybe. Um, you should talk to a sociologist about that. Um, uh, it is a cycle after all, right? Yeah, it's a cycle. When you look at other countries, it's the same thing, right? If the United States needs a mother, they vote the Democratic. If they need a father, they vote the Republican. It depends on what the domestic issues or international or foreign issues are. In yeah. the Philippines, partly it's prob- probably the same sentiment that propelled Duterte to the presidency. And since he cannot be elected again, I think uh, it's, a, it's a very similar mindset. It's a very similar protest uh, vote kind of thing that I think would also propel Bongo Marcos to the presidency should he win. Okay. Um, it's not so much the person. So the Sarah person. is not running anymore. Uh, mm-hmm. From a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being uh, she's running, 1 or 0 being she's not running. For, pre- for president, you mean? For president. You think Sarah is running for president? What, what's the scale again? 1 to 10. And 10 is? Being the highest, what? meaning she's running for president. One to ten. There's yeah. no zero. Huh? Well, I can put zero if you like. <laughs> zero. Zero chance of running for president. How about vice president? One to uh, zero to ten. Well, there's still hope there. Yeah. Because that looks like a dream team, right? I think there's still hope because she never said. I mean, if you're if you're Sarah's not the type to renege on her word, no. I like so daddy. She, huh? I like daddy. They're very different. Yeah. Okay. They're very different people. Very, very different. Um, they don't see eye to eye on a lot of things. You know? Even even this. You know? I mean, Duterte running for vice president, I mean, wanting to run for vice president initially, basically nipped, uh, nipped uh, the bud for Sarah. So she changed. She was almost going to say yes, and then her father comes to her and I'm running for vice president. By the time he changed his mind, it was... For her too late because like she said in a statement before she's not a last two minutes uh candidate she's um, not a last two minutes kind of candidate so, so you don't think she's going to uh change and switch on the 15th of november right not gonna happen <laughs> not for president because she said she's not running for president or vice president i mean well well i think there's a there's, there's still hope there okay I, personally not okay. because not because she said it but just because she never said she's not running for vice. Okay. So it's up, to, uh, it's up to the people to, to, to try to convince her. Okay. If there's still a groundswell for that, then maybe she'll, she, she'll reconsider. That, that, that will look uh, unbeatable, right? Uh, next candidate is Scott Moreno. This guy came out of nowhere uh, for me. Well, I he mean, like, a, he it's just, a good he, narrative. 
Yeah, he's got a good narrative from Basorero to president. Sounds like a good narrative. You know, I spoke to him first few months of his uh, term as mayor. And, uh, you know, I, I, I teased him that the country needs somebody like you. Uh, so this is your fault, Jigs. <laughs> Uh, this was two years ago or less than two years ago, just uh, when the sure pandemic started, right? So um, uh, what are your thoughts on Isco Moreno and his rise to national uh, fame? I guess he has a very good social media team also. <laughs> I, I see. Um, I see how they've documented a lot of things that he's done, um, whether it's real change, actual change in Manila or one of those stunts. I'm not sure. I can't be the judge of that. But definitely, he has a good social media team uh, that uh, who, who are able to create content that are that go viral and that have actually created this image of a mayor who could be uh, presidential timber. But um, I think it's a good narrative. I like that he, you know, it's, he's, he was poor, and you know, it, I think that might sell. Uh, he sounds. Very Tagalog, which I don't know if it would resonate with the Cebuanos or the Visaya speaking or Cebuano speaking people in the Visayas and Mindanao. We're fiercely regionalistic. Um, he had a quite an odd choice for vice president. Um, so maybe that shows that he really likes, I mean, maybe it shows how important social media is to him that he got a, a social media a, star? Social media star like Dr. Lily Ong. Uh -huh. Or maybe, who knows, they might substitute him mm -hmm. or someone. Mm -hmm. I yeah. heard that uh, they're still under negotiation with, uh, with, with Lenny. With Lenny? No, 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 no not with Lenny. With, uh, with, another, with another prospective candidate for vice. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I think he's okay. Um, I think he has is better... He, is, he qual is he qualified? Is he, he qualified president? to be president, you think? You, you know what? All of them running can be president. I think uh, uh, you don't have to because what do we, what is qual, what is a what is a qualification for president anyway? The constitution has set it at a very low, uh, very minimal uh, set. Of exactly. Yeah. So basic, basic education. So I think I should rephrase my question to: Will he do a good job of being president of the Republic of the Philippines? It's. I, I'll, then I'll be speculating. Okay. So what do you? But do you think uh, he'll 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 be all right uh, if he becomes president? I can't say. Okay. I mean, I can't say. You know, this is he's in his first term as mayor of Manila, so it, a lot, there's still a lot of things to be done there. I think he's done an okay job, no? more mm -hmm. than okay. But the country is an entirely different thing. It's an entirely different uh, ball game. Um, but see Duterte, he was also a mayor. Oh, for a very long time. Yeah, well, yeah. And with a, with a very good success rate in Davao, Davao is a success story. Manila's success story is still being written. Okay, so let's leave it at that. How about Lenny, I'm sorry, Manny Pacquiao? What are your thoughts on Manny Pacquiao running for president of the, of the Republic so of the Philippines? <laughs> You know, I know Manny. We're not we're not close, but you know, maybe we're acquaintances. You can say that. Um, but I think he's a very good guy, like very decent guy. Deep inside his heart, he's a good person. Um, I hear a lot of uh, negative feedback, you know, about the people surrounding him. I'm not a big fan of God spoke to me and told me to run. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a big fan of that because I'm all like, what, what, what's his mobile number? Because why isn't he <laughs> talking to you, right? <laughs> why, is, why isn't he talking to me? I feel less special. <laughs> so you don't, so, you don't, th you don't think God talked to him? You don't think so? <laughs> maybe we'll take his bird for it. <laughs> okay. Uh, how about how about uh, 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 what are your thoughts on on uh, Lenny Robredo? Hmm. I, I, I think her effort to rebrand um, yellow to pink, um, on one hand, I think it's an acknowledgement that it's, it's super damaged. Um, the, the pink uh, is super damaged. So that's an you acknowledgement. You mean the yellow, you mean? 
uh, sorry, the yellow is super damaged. But mm. um, so on the one hand, it's an acknowledgement of a weakness. But on the other hand, I appreciate that there is that acknowledgement and that they're trying to move past it. Um, they think, uh, well, people say she's uh, an economist. She's not an economist. That was her undergrad. An economist, a, bachelor, a, 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 a bachelor's degree in economics does not an economist make, mm-hmm. right? Uh, she doesn't have a career in econo- as an economist. She doesn't have a PhD or a postgrad in economics. So, but she has an undergrad. Um, so far, her interviews are, I would, I would say lackluster, but you know, they're just sometimes uh, comic relief. Bababa ako, kasi pag mababa ako sa baba, yung mga nasa baba, hindi alam na bababa ako sa baba. Oh my God. <laughs> but um, I think, uh, I like that she's running. Um, in a way, she's challenging a very, like, I think she, she and Isko, uh, she, I think she's gonna eat into Isko's slice of the pie, or they're gonna eat, uh, they're gonna eat into each other's slice of the pie. So it'll be interesting to see how Lenny, because I remember she said she's gonna run if a Marcos runs, and she made good on that promise because Bong Bong uh, filed and then she filed. Um, although I don't think that's a very good reason. To want to, run, to want to be president, no? because of one person, because you're not the uh, But I'd also like to see how she fights Bombo Marcos and at the same time, try uh, how she tries to get the market that could be hers from his goal. And he's already beaten Bombo Marcos in the first place, right? Twice. Well, if you believe the if you believe the outcome. Yeah, but they already, didn't they contest that in court already? Yeah, but how, the, how, how did it go? Who won? Well, for me, for me, um, whatever the Supreme Court says, I know that there was intervention there somehow by some okay. higher power. Of course, there's always a cheating. That, that's the uh, typical Filipino no, 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 no. response. I'm the Supreme Court... Okay, it's done. But you know, when you look at the, it's really statistically probable for me. She did not win. Statistically probable for her to win this this election, also. No, 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 no. no sorry, you know the one before. Yeah, um, of course. Yeah. Things, those precincts which showed that she had hundred percent of the vote. Come on. Okay. You know that's. Listen. But anyway, the Supreme Court ruled it. It's hard to argue with that, that, right? Yeah. 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 And but besides, rather, you know, tell you one. If we're going to look at things in retrospect as we move forward to 2022 and say, oh, she, she already beat Bamo Marcos. Yeah, according to the Supreme Court. Yeah. But I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. And when you look yeah. at all the when we look at all the when you look at all the surveys now online, different surveys, mainstream media, independent surveys, uh Bong Bong is the one leading. Mm-hmm. And finally, and, and song. Ask, Wait, go, 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 go continue. It also. It's, it's Bong Bong Sweden. Yeah. How about Ping Lakson? He's the most senior of all of the candidates. What are your thoughts on Ping? Um, <laughs> I think he's a decent choice, but uh, he's not going to win. Okay. I mean, you know, he's, he's not incompetent. Uh, at least I know he's smart enough. Uh, he has experience, but he's not going to win, so... I I I um I observed that all of these candidates are mostly from Luzon, except for Manny Pacquiao, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, you m- mentioned earlier that we are fiercely regionalistic. Those are your own words, fiercely regionalistic. And there's only Manny Pacquiao representing the Visayas. Um, isn't that Vismin? Vismin, yeah. Isn't that too tempting for Sarah Duterte not to take advantage? It's that not like here, here we go again. You know. Um, most of them are from, from, from Luzon. Only one is from Vizmin. Uh, my, my father is still very popular now, as the surveys indicate, although it's, it's slowly uh, uh, decreasing his popularity, but it's still very popular. So now is the right time to run for president now. And that your, you know, your family name is still very popular. And the, the Visayas vote or the Visayas Midina vote is only represented by one person 
uh, in Manny Pacquiao. Isn't that too tempting for Sarah not to take advantage? Of course, she sees that. She sees that. It, uh, you talk, try to talk to her about that, and she say, yeah, of course I see that. But she's not that type of person. You know, for Sarah, just because you can be president, just because you're the front runner, doesn't mean you should run. She's a different, she's a completely different breed of uh, leader. So why, so, wouldn't, why wouldn't she run for president? What would be the biggest reason why, if ever, indeed, she's not running after November 15? You know, she already said her piece, that she's not okay. running. And, uh, initially, her dad said that he wanted to run for vice president. That nipped things in the bud for her. I think she was really open already. And when, when he did that, she changed her mind. And she backed out. And, and when her dad backed out, for her, it was too late to change her mind and back to running for president again. And she never made up her mind to run for president. She was starting to be open to it. Mm -hmm. And then her dad talks to her, gives her, shows her two letters, two letters with two pages each. She showed it to me. She let me read it out loud. Letter and to whom? From whom? From, from him? From, from two anonymous anonymous sources okay and uh it was addressed to the president and it was basically pushing for uh, sarah sorry uh, go to the first letter mm -hmm. the second letter is sarah go okay but she said either 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 way she she wasn't gonna run and she wasn't gonna run against her dad's ticket because if she ran against her dad's ticket, for example, let's say there's a God Duterte ticket and she comes up with her own independent ticket uh, or she's running for independent, uh, uh, for president as an independent, she knows that people are going to say, ah, that's just a ploy to have Duterte, Duterte win as president and vice respectively. And she said, no, it, there's, there can only be one running for higher office. So if my dad wants it, then let him run, but not me. No, I'm not going to do that. So it took, it took her dad a long time to change his mind. In fact, in fact, I don't know if I can say this, but the night before uh, the night before the Saturday that Bongo filed, I was with Sarah and I was telling her, you know, I think your dad will back out. She said, no, he won't back out. I, that's what I hear from very reliable sources. Unimpeachable source in the files, you know. And well, she said something. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to repeat it. She said something. Like, it wasn't a very flattering uh, adjective to, to call her down. She says, "Bleep, bleep, don't back out." <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> but you you haven't lost hope, right? For Sarah running for at least vice president. Oh, for uh, for vice president, yes, I still have hope there. But um, and she hasn't categorically said no about that as well, right? She hasn't categorically said no about about running for vice president, like to yes. a state. Mm -hmm. No, she, but she hasn't said that she was interested in that either. Hmm. So. <laughs> Mike, you know, uh, the Philippine political system is really uh, uh, the uh, politics of, of, of personality, right? We don't really have ideological, uh, you know, uh, yeah, we lines. Don't have a strong political yeah. Party system, yeah, we don't we don't have, a, you know, I will vote for this particular person or this party because they mm -hmm. believe in this and that. Um, is, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Because I see this, you know, how, you know, how I rationalize that this is a good thing because this is democracy in action, you know, like. You know, anybody can run, you know, a former boxing champion, you know, uh, uh, a, a, an actor, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. This is democracy and you can run whatever you... I love uh, your optimism. Yeah. So, so, it, but for you, Mike, it, it, because you know what's happening in, in, in some parts of the world, right? Especially the United States, right? They're all, they have a two-party system there uh, and it is also a mess as well. So two-party system, you know, Free for all, like the Philippines, it's all still messy. So, yeah. um, what, what are your thoughts on on uh, on our political system here? Is, are we better off having a pers a personality based political uh, system, or should we go to the two party system? What are your thoughts? Oh, I, I think both. 
both systems have a uh, have a plus and you know have its pluses and demerits. Um, well, the American the brand of democracy, where we're supposedly patterned after, is supposedly more mature democracy, but um, it's become so polarized. Uh, Facebook you know, ruined it. <laughs> Demo- no, democracy was ruined by more democracy. <laughs> Because that's what Facebook is. It's really a lot more. I mean, it's giving democracy to to what is already democratic. Yeah. And you have unbridled freedoms there. Um, I think um, I think uh, our political party system should be strengthened uh, further. But um, but you know what, Jigs? I don't know if you know this. Um, even without the Democrat or Republican party two-party system here, even with all these other parties and it's largely personality-based. I don't know if you noticed, but there there seems to be a, a distinction between, like, you know, yeah, there are Filipinos who sound like Republicans, even without being Republican. And you have Filipinos who sound like Democrats, even without being the, uh, uh, card-bearing. So, so are Democrats. you suggesting that if and when we will have a line, it'll be between conservatives and liberals, similar to the United States? Is that Do you, do you think that's where the line will be? I think it's it's supposed to be more dynamic than that. But if you're going to lump them together, even without spelling it out, conservative and liberal, you see opinions uh, on on social media that uh, that actually reflect either liberal or conservative views, mm-hmm. right? And um, well, there are issues where you know people. So so I, I'm curious about your take, Mike, because a liberal and conservative, right? But there's also Bisaya and Tagalog, right? There's also the regionalism, which is also, I think, a great divide that we are still uh, suffering from, if you want to call it that, suffering, in spite of the fact that we're really in 2021, we're still very regionalistic. So it's not going to go conservative, liberal, or is it going to go Bisaya and, and Luzon? What, what are your thoughts on, on that other feature of society? I think, uh, yeah, there's that. So I think um, you can come up with a quadrant there. <laughs> <laughs> But I, you know what I noticed? A lot of the Visaya, a lot of the Visaya, it's not all, okay? Um, for example, Cebuano speaking, no? Bismin, uh, who started becoming political in this age of social media, meaning maybe before they used to just vote. But now they have opinions. They share. They participate in uh, all these trolling of whoever. Uh, they attack uh, opponents that they don't like. Um, I think initially they didn't really they didn't really bother whether I mean to identify themselves as whether you know they're liberal or conservative, right? But because let's say Duterte, for example, now uh, I know someone who in the mid 2000s was not at all political. And in our dinners or in our conversations in, in school I never, I would have never thought that he would be conservative or right leaning, right? Fast forward to this Facebook generation and the rise of Duterte, Isaya Napod, diba? Suddenly he's very noisy and he's very conservative, very right. Who? Uh, this person you're talking about? Oh, this about person, this example, yeah, this yeah. friend. So I said, okay, probably it started with regionalism in his mm-hmm. case. Mm-hmm. His like, like his journey of, uh, of uh, finding where he is in the political spectrum, mm-hmm. I think started with, with being regionalistic. And then, then there's, a, there's a character like Duterte who in, uh, embodied you know, that fierce, fiercely regionalistic part of him. And suddenly Duterte was a bit more conservative. I mean, not conservative, but you know. No, the way he attacked. The, the way he attacked the church, the way his language, I, I would say he's, he's liberal. No, no, I, think, I think it depends on the issue, but um, for example, the American, Filipino Americans who like Duterte are Republicans. Right? It's kind of yeah, weird. Yeah. A lot of them are Republicans. Well, well, well you know, Trump but, in particular but, likes uh, strong men. He's always idolized strong men, that's right? That's right. So, but, that's but, right. But, it, but it's not it's not his ideology. It's just the way he they're no, similar right, in, in that in a way. If you follow American, how the Americans have compartmentalized it, it's the you know the liberals or Democrats and the conservatives or Republicans, right? 
Mm -hmm. So if you follow that example, oh, he cursed the Pope. Okay, that's probably liberal. But but uh, in terms of policies or, or fan base, when you look at the Filipino community uh, who liked the Duterte, most of them were Republicans. So mm -hmm. now going back to that friend of mine, that friend of mine, that example. So he was not political before. And maybe in his political journey, it started with regionalism. And then a guy, a personality rose no, from, from Davao. Not, not necessarily from obscurity, but from Davao. Speaks his language from his region, or at least in the Visayas in Mindanao. And suddenly he supports uh, Duterte's policies. Whatever, whatever those are, whether they're conservative or liberal, let's not debate that. But see how, um, how our voters, how our citizens are forming uh, their political opinion. Um, I think it, this, this is just an observation. I think it, it should be the, the subject of an in-depth sociological study. You know, how, how Filipinos in this age of social media where there are cults of personality, you know, there is a, a pervading cult of personality, how they form political opinion. Uh, and sometimes they feel very strongly for, for the, you know, sometimes, for example, uh, like in the States, I know someone who was not an anti-vaxxer, but he's Republican and suddenly we're, we're, we're fighting. <laughs> Over vaccination? Yeah. Because they, because they say I'm imposing my, <laughs> my views on vaccination. I said, no, they're on my social media. I'm not imposing it on your timeline. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, it's like you're saying, don't open your mouth. You know, when, you, when, you, when you're telling me not to post about or uh, for vaccination on my own timeline, it's like you're telling me not to open my mouth on, on the things that I feel I believe in. I guess, Mike, uh, the, the ideologies will not come until, you know, there are less poor people in this country, right? Because people can't think ideologies and all of that stuff, beliefs if their stomach is empty. But you do believe, uh, Mike, that the last well, election, there, the, last elec sorry? The, the last election, sorry, the last elections, it was really uh, a regionalistic vote, right? Um, the, the Bisaya uh, uh, came through uh, and did uh, pu put Duterte in power. Would you say that, that it was the Bisaya vote that was pretty strong? Would yeah. you say that? I guess so, yeah. You can say and, that. Uh, and uh, why do you think uh, that... Uh, can I say something? Uh, can I say ahead. something? Go, go ahead, uh, go ahead. Continue. In addition to that, yeah. you know President Arroyo, she would always credit um, her time. She spent uh, her summers, I think, in Iligan, mm -hmm. part of her childhood in Iligan. Because of that, she learned how to speak Cebuano. Mm -hmm. She's uh, like a polyglot or something. She mm -hmm. speaks other... Languages and dialects also, uh, aside from English, Filipino, and Spanish. Maybe if she didn't spend time in Iligan, and maybe if she didn't learn Cebuano during her summers, and she, she would not have become president. Okay. So, so that's another president who actually credits her ability to speak Cebuano. To, to, to having been able to get uh, the Cebuano or the Bismarck vote. So do you think that if they see that... Uh, uh, I'm, I'm curious, uh, the alignments now, but when, uh, for example, Bongbong Bong eventually has Sara Duterte as his vice president, mm -hmm. uh, do you think there's going to be a realignment as well in uh, the other candidates of, uh, for president? Do you think that they will... Uh, respond to a Bong Bong Sara uh, tandem? Yeah, because everything is very fluid right now. I mean, it's hard to say. You know, like for example, is really on a, a mere placeholder for his call. Um, who are the suspects will, for that, for who will placeholder or replace uh, Willie Ong if, if ever? You mentioned. Well, I heard Gwen Garcia is. Uh, <laughs> really now? Okay. Yeah, I mean, okay. if, if, if you ask me, of course, you know, uh, we're no longer. Chummy <laughs> because, <laughs> because of the pandemic, but yeah, yeah, if, you know, but you know, I'm able to set aside my biases for or against someone. Objectively speaking, I think Isko, Mayor of Manila, and Gwen Garcia, governor of Cebu, man and woman who speak the language of the masses very, very, very articulately, I think they're a formidable team. I mean, More that's formidable from, than Willie Ong, who's got 16 million followers on, on social media. <laughs> You know, he 
he lost he lost the senator but wasn't he like somewhere he wasn't he like close to the uh, top 12 at that time when were they looking for 12 it's not going to win gigs let's not let's okay. not uh, okay. no, it will not translate to votes moka okay. osan has how many how, how many i mean you know like half she only yeah. needed how many votes to be top, to win a seat in congress right mm-hmm. or did even she know? that no she did not i mean how many how okay. many votes 300,000 how many mm-hmm. votes does the party list uh need to to secure at least one seat one or well, 3,000 300,000 so right? so you, you don't Oka believe Oka that Five million votes, a uh, five million uh, followers. followers. So you don't believe that it'll, it's convertible. It, it, you know, it doesn't no, immediately, not. automatically uh, translate into votes if you have a lot of no. following on social media. But how powerful is social media going to be in this election? Because I sincerely and truly believe that the last elections was mostly social media driven, right? Um, I think a lot of that had uh, to do with social media. Uh, will it be more now in 2022 elections? Or will it be less now? You know, especially with a whistleblower of Facebook uh, who uh, squealed in uh, the uh, United States. Uh, do you think, uh, think the, the influence of social more. media will be more or less? I think it'll be more, especially okay. with the pandemic uh, still uh, raging in a way. I mean, we don't know if there's another surge that's data driven. Uh, we don't know if there's another delta, delta or variant driven surge in the offering. We don't know that, right? So. Uh, the safest is really social media campaigning in social media, and a lot of the even the CD classes are on social media, right? Um, and they have access to internet, so I think it's still going to play a very integral uh, part, um, probably even more pronounced than before. That's you know what um, I'm answering really as, not as an expert. Here. Of course, so, yeah. You're, you're just I, a, a thought I, I, leader. I, 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 <laughs> no, so I'm just answering from what I know. Uh, I'm I've long since retired from public relations or political consulting. Um, the the people I support, I support them on a personal level. Um, okay. So I really, it's this is what a rather difficult interview for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's okay, Mike. We know that this is our just your opinions and all of that. And plus, we had a disclaimer earlier about you know all the all of your biases and all of that stuff, which makes this conversation even more uh, you know more authentic, more real. Thank you so much for for doing this. By the way, man, I mean like um, I, actually, you're very interesting to talk to and all of that stuff. I I think next time let's talk about philosophy. In, oh, I love that life. too. I love that too. Talk about life, Ma- Mike. I, one last honest, question. I'm of politics, Jigs. Yeah, yeah. One last question, Mike. I'm I'm curious, Mike, because I know you've had a lot of uh, uh, social media enemies, right? Both uh, your personal friends and just you know social media friends from Magawa uh, I'm curious, but I I I I think we don't know how to have conversations about politics and and religion and and philosophy, right? We really end up fighting because um, I mean, like it should start with respect, right? And when we have a conversation, you know, we may disagree. About a lot of things, you know. I may dislike your candidate. I may love this other candidate. I may n- not believe in your religion. But at the end of the day, you know, we're still human beings, and that's my opinion. That's your opinion, and we still can love each other in spite of our differences, right? Now, no man, I'm like, why do we always end up fighting, especially when it comes to conversations about politics and religion? When in fact, you know, these are big questions that nobody really has a grasp on fully. That's why we're having a conversation, a debate. Why does it always end up? In 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 a in a in you know conflict. I'm curious why is that? Uh-huh. Because we all like to impose ourselves. We we like to impose our opinion, impose our values. That's why I said going back to what we were talking about earlier. We have a set of values, our uh, you know a brand of idealism, and we feel that like if someone does not measure up, that they're lesser as human beings. And who made us the arbiter of right and wrong? Exactly, who said yeah. that our opinion was superior to the others? Mm-hmm. And, and and I think um, I I don't know. I before I'm not going to say that I was as argumentative. I was probably really bad before, but no, I don't <laughs> really. You know, let's talk about it, and you know, okay. But uh, uh, <laughs> I, there's no point in fighting yeah. uh, over something. I, I, I understand why sometimes it can be heated, and um, like for example, when it comes to the pandemic, again, mm-hmm. it goes back to it's one of those non-negotiables. It mm-hmm. ventures into that territory for me. A little skirmish with the governor, right? 
I'm sorry. Your little skirmish with the governor. Yeah, very little. <laughs> <laughs> very little skirmish. <laughs> so, but yeah, there are so, non-negotiables still, right? But, but at the end no, of the day... No, you know what? There's another guy I fought with the last, I mean, the last month or so. It's also very, very powerful. Um, and when, when you say fought with, what do you mean? I mean in words, right? You, you didn't punch didn't, each other or something like that. No, we didn't like that. Uh, we didn't punch each other. We were more civilized. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying is I stopped talking to them. Okay. Well, why would that be? Of, well, because they're, well, they told me that they, they're offended at my posts against Ivermectin. Okay. And I'm like, who are you to tell me what to post and what not to post? Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I felt like, okay, you're, you're invading, uh, you're crossing a line here. And, um, and I feel very strongly about, this is again, pandemic related. And uh, so I stopped talking to them <laughs> <laughs> because um, it became very toxic already. How okay. I was being told, how I was, be how, how, how I was being told, uh, you know, not to post against ivermectin and i'm like you know if you want to take it lak mo, bahala ka. but don't tell me in my you know to not post in my own space what i feel i mean i just get it from cdc i get it from the who uh so yeah there, there's another very very powerful person who i'm not talking to anymore <laughs> <laughs> but should, should it always end up like so, that yeah. mike i mean can we just not Fight. I mean, at the end of the day, that's your opinion. That's his opinion. End of story. Let's have a scotch. You know what I mean? Because I'm sure with all the things that we did disagree about. No, it's idea. No, it's idea. That's the idea of things, Jigs. But the moment yeah. someone tells me what to do, okay, and and, and it becomes a toxic environment of um, being controlled. Why? Just because you're this whatever person, you are, uh -huh. whatever you are, or because you're you have so much money, or you're you know you have a high position in government. I don't like that. Uh -huh. The moment that someone crosses that line for me. Especially as regards one of my non-negotiables. Okay. I don't give a shit. We're okay. not friends anymore. You know, <laughs> I, right. I, I, I become, maybe I'm old. Because <laughs> <laughs> I can bullshit me there. It's just, I don't care. I'm going to walk away. And I'm happy. This is, it makes me happy. But, but, it it, makes, but, but isn't maturity, that doesn't, mature, doesn't maturity allow you to... I'm not saying I'm, I'm not saying more mature. I'm just saying I'm older. Okay, 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 okay. Or no, crankier, no. crankier, crankier. <laughs> my my tolerance level has really uh, uh, decreased, it. right? It's really decreased uh, a great deal. Okay. Especially because this bullshit. is the pandemic. Okay. No, it's the pandemic. Maybe no, no. What I mean, your tolerance level for bullshit has has decreased, right? Yeah, especially if it relates to the pandemic. Okay. Uh, that's what I've noticed. I mean, this is unprecedented. What we're, mm -hmm. what we had to go through, what you know, what what it's done to our economy, yeah. uh, how it's upended our lives. It's just too much. Uh -huh. And then and you have all these people who have no expertise whatsoever, uh, imposing. I don't know. I don't know if it's for one reason or another. I don't know why. But don't tell me what to post and what not to post. So I I didn't come and fight with them. I just ghosted them. <laughs> <laughs> And maybe you can invite them for a coffee or scotch one of these days, and you know, mm -hmm. clear the clear, clear the air because I'm sure all of those or not. things. Uh, or or not. <laughs> well, it is up to you, Mike. Mike, thank you so much for doing this. I know you have a dinner that you have to prepare. Yes. And, and all of that stuff. Uh, I also have a, a an event that I have to attend to as well. So thank Thanks. you so much, Mike. And before you go, Mike, what is your 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 message to all of us who are enjoying? with the uh, popcorn on uh, my left hand and beer on the right hand, watching the presidential elections developing. What, what do you have to say about, about uh, that? And uh, to all of the uh, people watching this uh, uh, develop uh, into, into uh, a, a presidential race uh, this 2022, uh, what are your, uh, what's your advice to people yeah. watching and observing all of this? Take it seriously and don't take it seriously together. Take it seriously because it's the future of our country. Uh, don't take my word for it, please. Like, like I said, I have my biases, um, which may mean I'm more informed. <laughs> but but uh, in some aspects, in some aspects, but uh, don't take my word for it. Um, look at the issues, uh, the hot button issues that uh, you feel very strongly for post pandemic recovery plan, you know, the economy, et cetera, health, um, and see how these candidates who are offering themselves up to you 
uh, as alternatives, as a choice, how they how they fare as you know vis a vis uh, these issues. Um, look at their track record. Um, not necessarily their parents' track record, but their own track record. Um, how they answer the issues, how sincere they may appear, uh, because you can't really know no, what, what their motivations are. It's completely impossible to to see what's in their hearts. Um, so take it seriously because it's the future of our country that's at stake. But at the same time, don't take, take it too seriously that that you end up fighting with, uh, with your family. Your family. <laughs> but if your friends become too toxic, unfriend them. <laughs> Good one. Mike, <laughs> if they want to catch if they want to catch you uh, on the social media platforms, if they want to follow you, where, where should they go on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter and all of that? Go ahead, tell them. Don't man. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't follow Mike Acevedo don't, Lopez, okay? Don't follow don't him. Also, it's, it's just all food there. <laughs> I'm just sure. gonna make you hungry at 1 a.m. Sure, 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 but you'll get the scoop on Bong Bong or Sarah or whatever too. I'm posting something after this. <laughs> good, good. Thank you, Mike. Enjoy you. your, your dinner, Mike, and you take care. And I'll catch you here in Cebu, hopefully, face to face. And let's talk about yes. philosophy, like you said earlier, like you suggested earlier. Philosophy, yeah? yes. All right, Jigs. You take, take care. care. Take care. Take care. Bye. Take care, Bye-bye. everyone. When your car runs out of batteries in the middle of the night, just call 3408989 and everything will be all right. No batteries, no cash, no problem. You can use your credit card with our wireless wiper at all, all batteries. Just call, all batteries. Contact our new 24-7 hotline at 340-8989. No batteries, no cash, no problem. All batteries. This episode is brought to you by All Batteries. Our delivery never sleeps. Day and night, rain or shine, no holidays. Call them at 340-8989. That's 340-8989. Or visit their Facebook page at facebook.com slash allbatteries. Delivery, jump start, warranty, and assist 24-7 at All Batteries. More batteries, more power.